Hello everyone and welcome to this special forum which is entitled Acts of Magis at at the forefront of a pandemic. The special forum is co-sponsored or co-organized by university, the University Research Council and the Ateneo Research Institute of Science and Engineering. We are going to present to you um, experts in their own field, professors from the Loyola schools who have carved a name for themselves because of what they have done in society to respond to the needs. They're not just armchair researchers, they're also passionate individuals that want to do whatever it is for the common good. So this is the special forum is our way of telling our public that there is something that, not just that there's something that we're doing, but that we can harvest something positive from what is negative in our society. So I'd like to welcome you to this and I hope that you will get to go home after the presentations, taking away with you a lot more hope and courage as we face the turmoils in our society. So welcome again and enjoy the presentations. Thank you. Mathematics has always been an important part of coming up with data-driven and scientifically-backed solutions that drive decision-making in all sectors of society. And Dr. Elvira Delara Tubrio is no stranger to the various applications of her field of interest in the real world, particularly in the fields of risk management, epidemiology, and disaster risk. She has served as an evaluator of risk management models for various banks and has contributed much research to the field of mathematical finance. In 2018, she published her research on Marikina flood hazard models using historical data of water levels, which would be helpful in guiding the local government of Marikina in resource planning for an apt response to flooding incidents. Last year, she published a study entitled A Tuberculosis Epidemic Model with Latent and Treatment Period Time Delays in Dynamical Systems, Bifurcation Analysis and Applications, which represents the flow pattern of tuberculosis as an SEIT model. Beyond her contribution to academic research and its applications, she is also a well-loved professor by her students providing both instruction and guidance as the chair of the mathematics department in the Ateneo. Now, let us listen to Dr. Elvira Delara Tubrio as she presents her findings on the mathematical modeling of the COVID-19 outbreak in the Philippines. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome again to Acts of Magis, Athenians at the forefront of a pandemic. My name is Chris Castillo from the Loyola School Student, Student and Administrative Services Cluster, and I will be your moderator for today. Acts of, Mag Acts of Magis uh, is brought to you by the University Research Council and the Ateneo Research Institute of Science and Engineering. We are here with you today live on two platforms. We are in a GMeet uh, conference where the, the, the people present there may forward their questions through the chat. And we are also streaming live uh, via the Ateneo FB account, you know, where you could also post 
some of your comments, which we can direct later to our guest. We'd like to inform everyone that this uh, session is being recorded live. And so may we request everyone also to please put your microphones on mute. So during the first session of uh, Acts of Magis, we heard about faster, all right? But then we looked at the CS side of that in a sense, uh, the computer science side of that, the MIS side of that. But this afternoon, we are bringing you back faster, but we are looking at the mathematical side of it. And so without further ado, we'd like to call our guest this afternoon, Doc LV. Hello, Doc LV. Hi, hi, Chris. Uh, thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, good afternoon, Father Ben. Uh, good afternoon to my colleagues in the Ateneo, my colleagues in SOSE, uh, and my colleagues in the mathematics department, my friends, family, current and former students. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for joining me here today. Okay, so shall I start, Chris? Yes, well, b b before we start with the presentation, Doc LV, kumusta po kayo? How are you doing? Tuloy ang buhay. We're working on new models. Uh, the the one that we have just finished, actually, hindi, hindi siya finished, no? Uh, we continue to improve our model for the projection of the spread of the disease. And, okay. you know, mathematical modeling is a dynamic process. Hindi mo siya iiwan, no? You always have mm. to update parameters. And actually, we, we update the, the projection every day because there are new cases every day. So, yes. yon. and then we're, we're also working. Uh, just this morning, we had a meeting uh, with NEDA and the economics department. Uh, they're joining us. Uh, to, <laughs> uh, uh, so, we're working on other aspects uh, of the dashboard, like um, socioeconomic. And then... Uh, we've uh, we've just finished the the security index. We're working with PNP, okay. and then Epimetrics and Dr. Wong uh, uh, is also our partner in in Faster. All right. Well, it seems you're a so very mahaba. busy person, ma'am. But we hope you're also doing well and getting to you get you get to find time to also rest, no? Together with your team, who who are doing a lot of good things for our country. So uh, I'll get back to you later, ma'am. The floor is yours for your presentation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Chris. Okay, so uh, let me present now my uh, slides. Chris, uh, are we okay? Yes, ma'am, you may proceed. Okay, so again, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, two weeks ago, uh, Dr. Rina Estuar, our project leader in FASTER, um, introduced to you the features of our project and she showed you how the dashboard uh, that we created helps LGU and government agencies uh, in trying to understand the spread of the COVID-19 disease in our country and then come up with science-based decisions. Uh, today I will explain to you, uh, hopefully in the simplest way possible, the underlying models from which the graphs, numbers, and projections in the dashboard are derived. Uh, this is the landing page of our dashboard. Here, assigned personnel from LGUs and government agencies log in to be able to view the different pages of the dashboard. Okay, so what is FASTER? Uh, the meaning of FASTER is quite long. Uh, it stands for Feasibility Analysis of Syndromic Surveillance Using Spatial Temporal Epidemiological Modeler for the Early Detection of Disease. The project started in 2016, funded by DOST, PCHRD, with the aim of helping AG, LGUs uh, use the data to analyze the spread of diseases such as measles, typhoid, and dengue. Uh, FASTER was developed by Ateneo Center for Computing Competency and Research, or ACRE, in cooperation with the uh, UP Manila NTHC and the DOH EPI Bureau. Then when the COVID-19 crisis broke out, uh, FASTER was immediately reconvened, this time to focus on models and projections related to the COVID-19 disease. Uh, currently, the entire team is composed of four subgroups, uh, one of which is our team, the mathematical modeling team. Okay, so what do users see in the FASTER dashboard? 
upon logging in, uh, they will see several pages, one of which uh, shows forecasts of the number of infected individuals in a particular area, uh, city, province, or even region, depending on the choice of scenarios of the user. Uh, to start the simulation, uh, the user chooses a particular area, okay, indicates whether uh, they want to see scenario of community quarantine being in or not, when the community quarantine starts and the level of testing and health system capacity for that area. So the forecast that is produced is based on uh, the choice of scenarios. They can see and compare different uh, forecasts for different scenarios of the extent of community quarantine and the level of testing and health system capacity. Uh, the projections or graphs in the dashboard are created using a mathematical model. Uh, but first, um, it's important to understand uh, what a mathematical model is, as, as well as its limitations. Uh, a mathematical model is uh, used in order to gain insights about a phenomenon. It's important to know the difference between a real world in which we observe the phenomenon and the conceptual world where the mathematical model works. Because not every aspect of reality can be captured, a mathematical model starts with simplifying assumptions. And we should always remember these assumptions when interpreting the results. In fact, the challenge for the research community is to continue improving the model until it, its output is as close as possible to reality. Uh, therefore, mathematical modeling is really a dynamic process. Okay. Now, the faster model for COVID-19 is a population model. Uh, it's commonly referred to as compartmental model. Uh, in the model, the entire human population of an area, maybe a, a region, uh, a province or city, uh, the entire population is divided into six compartments or groups of people. So. Uh, these are the compartments. And at each point in time, an individual belongs to exactly one compartment based on his or her infectious status. Uh, and then the transfer of an individual from one compartment to another, as I will explain to you later, through time, uh, the, the passage through time is governed by a system of differential equations. Uh, note that the use of differential equations to describe the passage of individuals from one compartment to another is an assumption. It is just an approximation. Uh, in reality, actual data may not exactly follow uh, the graphs of solutions of the differential equation. Uh, this figure describes how individuals transfer from one compartment to another. Let me explain the compartments uh, one by one. I will start with S. Uh, the S or susceptible compartment consists of individuals who have not been infected uh, with the COVID-19 disease. They are prone to catching the disease once they get into contact with infectious individuals. The E compartment represents the exposed individuals or those who have been infected but not yet infectious. After a few days, the exposed individuals will become infectious. So they go to either the IA compartment or the IS compartment. Okay? The IA compartment consists of uh, individuals who are infectious but asymptomatic or show no symptoms of, of the disease. Um, the IS compartment or infectious symptomatic consists of uh, infectious individuals who show signs of the, the disease such as fever, respiratory problems, and so on. Uh, note that the individuals in the IA and IS compartments are capable of spreading the disease, but they have not been identified yet through confirmatory tests. Then uh, those from IA and IS who have gone through confirmatory tests then transferred to compartment C or confirmed. Okay? 
confirmed individuals are those who have been confirmed positive with COVID-19 through tests. Uh, the model assumes that they are already under isolation, of course, with proper health care, and therefore cannot infect others. Finally, compartment R stands for recovered. Individuals in this compartment are those who have recovered from the disease, and uh, we assume that they have acquired lifelong immunity uh, from the disease and therefore cannot infect others, uh, and they cannot infect others anymore. Okay, now at what rate do individuals transfer from one compartment to another? Okay, from there we, we, uh, we will derive the differential equations. Uh, start with uh, S, okay, susceptible. Uh, we can see our one arrow going to S and two arrows going uh, out of S, okay. These arrows represent the rate of increase or decrease in S, uh, in S population per day. Uh, the arrow with symbol A denotes how many people are added into the S compartment per day. Uh, the A corresponds to the inflow to S through birth. Okay? Now, the arrow pointing outward with symbol mu represents the decrease in the S population per day because of death due to causes other than COVID-19. Remember, they're not, the S population are not yet uh, infected. No? Uh, mu represents the natural mortality rate. Okay. Lastly, the arrow from S going to E represents the portion of S population who have been infected with the disease. The parameter beta here represents... We have multiple variables, multiple independent... Represents the disease transmission rate, okay? Uh, since uh, the rate of increase, if you remember your calculus, um, derivative, since the rate of increase or decrease per day in the population is equal to the derivative of S with respect to T, then we have the following equation. <clears throat> so you can see the positive term in S prime, the derivative of S with respect to T uh, corresponds to the inflow, and then the negative terms correspond to outflow. Okay. Next, uh, let's focus on E. For the E compartment, based on the arrows, uh, the susceptible individuals who become infected are added in. Those who die due to natural causes are removed. And those who become infectious uh, after about five days go to either IS, IS, or IA compartments. And therefore, we have the following equation for E prime, the derivative of E with respect to time. Next, uh, the IA compartment consisting of infectious asymptomatic individuals is increased or decreased per day as indicated by the arrows, these arrows. A proportion of E individuals are added to IA. Some IA individuals may eventually recover without showing any symptom un, uh, symptoms until they recover, so they transfer to our compartment. Others eventually exhibit uh, COVID-related symptoms and hence transfer to IS. Some die due to natural causes, and some undergo confirmatory tests and transfer to the confirmed compartment. Okay. From this, we have the following equations. Now, a larger portion of the a larger portion of the exposed individuals go to the IS compartment. Again, IS refers to the group of infectious symptomatic individuals or those who exhibit symptoms of COVID-19. As I said earlier, some infectious symptomatic uh, individuals exhibit symptoms after a few days and hence transfer to IS compartment. Now, how is the IS compartment reduced per day? Uh, again, some die due to non-COVID-related causes at the rate mu, and some die due to the disease at the rate epsilon sub i. Lastly, uh, at the rate delta S per day, 
some IS individuals get the confirmatory test and transfer to compartment C. Uh, later, I will explain to you uh, the connection the, between Delta S and testing and health system capacity. Okay? So from this, the, this is the differential equation. You can connect the terms of the differential equations uh, with the arrows and the num and the expressions in the uh, beside the arrows. Okay, this is the the uh, important one. Confirmed. So this compartment is the confirmed compartment. IS and IA individuals transferred to C at the rate delta S and delta A per day, respectively. And then after some time, the confirmed cases recover and transfer to compartment R. Some of them die due to COVID-19 at the rate epsilon T. By the way, we got the value of this from the data of DOH. Or due to uh, other causes at the rate mu. So the differential equation is this. <clears throat> Finally, the last step is compartment R or recovered. Uh, based on the arrows, the differential equation is this. Okay. okay. So here's a summary of the of our model. It's a system of ordinary differential equations, and we obtain a unique solution once the initial condition consisting of uh, E of zero. Uh, S of 0, E of 0, and so on, up to R of 0, is specified. Now, among the six compartments, we only have data for compartment C, or confirmed cases, which we obtained from the DOH Epi Bureau. Okay? Now, because we assume that the number of individuals in each compartment is described by a solution to the differential equations, which I uh, showed earlier, and by using an algorithm called simulated annealing, we also get the numbers in the other compartments, particularly IA, IS, and R. Again, it's important to note that the mathematical model just presented has the following limiting uh, assumptions. Number one, homogeneous mixing. Uh, in particular, uh, the model assumes that each individual has the same probability of getting into contact with an infectious person. Uh, this is a limitation of the model. Okay? Number two, um, as you see in the differential equations, the, the model assumes that the rate of increase or decrease in the number of people in each compart compartment does not change uh, through time. Okay? And number three, uh, it is assumed that the number of people in each, in each compartment follows the solution of the differential equation. Again, this is just an approximation because in reality, the actual data of confirmed cases may not perfectly follow the graphs of solutions. Uh, we just uh, use an algorithm to find the best fitting curve. Uh, this will be shown in the next graphs. Okay. Uh, you can see here four graphs uh, uh, corresponding to the different uh, Four graphs uh, generated corresponding to the different scenarios using the same data set. Okay? Um, in, in each of these uh, graphs, the black curve okay, represents the actual data of confirmed cases, okay? as you can see in, the, in each of the four graphs. The green graph represents the, the graph of C, confirmed as part of the solution of the differential equation. Notice that the green graph, which we show in FASTER, in the FASTER dashboard, is just an approximation of the actual data. Okay. The red and blue graphs correspond to the IS and IA compartments. Recall this, that these are the numbers of infectious individuals who have not been detected yet. Okay. What is amazing is that we get approximations of these numbers without having actual data. Now, this is a sample of a uh, graph shown in the dashboard based on a solution to the differential equations corresponding to a chosen scenario. We see projections of these cases two times. 
Okay. Now, uh, how does the FASTER model analyze the effect of community quarantine such as ECQ, GCQ, ano pang CQ, modified ECQ, etc., as well as the level of testing and health systems capacity? Uh, pay particular attention to the parameter beta, beta here. As I said earlier, this is the disease transmission rate. And then delta S, this is the rate at which IS infectious symptomatic individuals transfer to the confirmed compartment. Um, we constructed the parameter beta to be a function of beta sub zero, which is calculated from R naught obtained using the next generation matrix method and lambda. Okay. Lambda is the parameter that we feed to the data of confirmed cases during a community quarantine or ECQ period using our algorithm. When the ECQ is relaxed, the lambda is replaced by lambda times 1 minus gamma, where gamma is the percentage of the population allowed to go out. Next are delta S. Remember that delta S is the rate at which uh, IS individuals transfer to the confirmed compartment. Hence, for example, when delta S is 50%, okay, uh, it means that testing should be enhanced and uh, targeted at finding 50% of undetected infectious symptomatic individuals. Of course, this also requires effective contact tracing. Okay? Also, the 50% level that I use as an example is not limited to testing. Uh, it also represents the capacity to isolate the confirmed cases in quarantine facilities and to give them proper treatment. Okay. So the parameter delta S represents a whole package. Trace, test, isolate, and treat. Now, in the dashboard, uh, the parameters that I mentioned correspond to the chosen scenarios of the user. Okay. Uh, so you have here the, 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 the choices here correspond to the quarantine, and they are, they are then uh, represented in the model using lambda and gamma. And then uh, we have here health system capacity corresponding to delta S. Okay. Uh, I'd like to emphasize, therefore, that the faster model produces scenario analysis, not just a single projection. Um, allow me to share with you uh, what I presented last week. Okay? Um, and this will show how, how uh, the model can help uh, decision makers. Okay? Take, for example, the following scenario, okay, which uh, we analyze using the model. Uh, suppose that we want, suppose that um, we consider the possibility of, of transitioning from ECQ to MCQ on May 15. That's one scenario. And then uh, another scenario is May 31. And then we consider the possibility that delta S is 20% and then delta S is 50%. Again, referring to the testing and health system capacity, assume that uh, this level is achieved starting May 16. <coughs> Now, uh, suppose that gamma is 50%, so meaning uh, the percentage of people allowed to go out is 50%. And then assume that the modified ECQ will, will last until December 31. Again, this is just a choice. No? Now, take a look at the numbers. Okay? Notice that when the, when the testing and health system capacity, the numbers are huge. The, uh, these are numbers in the peak of the curve. Okay. However, when we enhance the testing and health system capacity, the numbers are greatly reduced. Even the mortality, critical cases, and so on. Okay. Um, this is another set of scenarios. Suppose that uh, the, the modified ECQ is, uh, we transition from uh, ECQ to MECQ, and then it will end, it will last for one month, starting May 16 or three months, or six months. And then assume that the testing and health system capacity stays at 50% okay, in all uh, scenarios. Now assume that uh, around 50% 50, 50 of uh, 
the population are allowed to go out. Okay? Uh, well, we can see here that we have the same numbers because actually if we look at the graphs in the faster uh, dashboard, all those numbers, the, all those peaks are here. Okay? And we can see that there can be, uh, in each of the scenarios, there will be another peak. Uh, well, it's like we, we can consider this as just buying some time, no? uh, allowing our uh, health system to, to improve further. Uh, this, the, the other peaks will, will occur maybe 2021 or 2023 and so on. Okay? Well, we're hoping that this, uh, this, in, this peaks will not occur anymore. Probably many things uh, could, might have happened already. Baka meron na tayong vaccine uh, before 2021 or 2023. Okay? So again, going back to, the, uh, to this, so I, I considered here, we considered here um, two sets of scenarios and uh, level of health, uh, health system capacity. Now, what is the key takeaway? Um, so what's the message of the projections? So perhaps the message is this. It's possible to allow a certain percentage of the population to go out, okay? Meaning we allow workers to go back to work to earn a living and let the economy restart, okay? We can do that provided that we invest in enhanced health systems capacity. If we cannot reach that uh, level of health systems capacity, we will, uh, the other numbers, the huge numbers uh, might, might be realized. No? Of course, their responsibility is not solely in the hands of the government. Everyone should do their part, follow the health protocol, social distancing, personal hygiene, cooperate with the LGUs, and health authorities, and so on. Okay. Now, uh, I I have just presented to you the the mod the modeling part of the of faster, uh, focusing on the spread of the disease. Uh, for the last part of my talk, allow me to share with you that faster is not limited to projections of the spread of the disease. No? Because we service the LGUs, the dashboard also provides the epidemiological status of an area based on the framework of epimetrics. This is among the basis for determining whether the area should be under GCQ, ECQ, and MECQ. The dashboard also provides uh, projections of the model uh, of the needed medical supplies and personnel. This is produced in collaboration with AIM. We also aim to show soon in the dashboard the security index and socioeconomics index, uh, socioeconomic index of an area. Uh, we have been uh, working closely with concerned uh, government agencies. Lastly, uh, allow me to introduce to you the members of our team. Puro kami bata. We have Dr. Timothy Robinteng of the Mathematics Department, Mr. Carlo Estadilla of the Math Department, Dr. J. Michael Makalalag of Caraga State University. He just finished PhD mathematics from Ateneo uh, here in our, in our university. And then Mr. Joshua Uyhe, PhD student at Carnegie Mellon University. He's also a product of our math program. And the recent addition to the team are uh, Mr. Lian Yao, Mr. DJ Benito, and of course our uh, uh, project leader in FASTER, Dr. Uh, Rina Estuar. Okay. These are the other members of the team. Actually, marami pa to, no? At sila lang yung may uh, pictures. Okay. Thank you very much for listening. I hope uh, you learned something. Okay, Chris? Thank you very much, Doc LV. I'm sure our, our audience uh, would like to give you a warm round of applause now after sharing your research. Uh, for now, we'll give you hearts as we have given our other previous guests. <laughs> I am, ma'am. Um... <laughs> well, we're, at this point, we'd like to, well, first, we'd like to apologize to some of our audience who tried to catch the, the, the talk through the live stream. No, we, uh, I heard there were some, um, some problems with the streaming, but don't worry, the, the full uh, recording of this will also be uploaded later on, and so it can also be shared to your other 
uh, mathematician friends, and even to our lay partners. No? But for now, we're still good. We're, we're going live. No? And we are we can get questions now, uh, both through the Gmeet chat and through the FB live. No? Uh, but so far, a lot of the, the comments, ma'am, I hope you could see them, are, are praises and thanks no, for your work and your team's work. Friends ko yung mga yan eh. <laughs> oh, friends natin lahat eh. No? Palakpak <laughs> daw. All right. But uh, maybe we could, we could start with some questions we, we put together early on. Um, well, in terms of, of, of this type of work, no, how is it different from the usual academic research no, that, that you also do most likely, but this mm -hmm. time clearly the, the relevance is... is very present, very clear. No? So as a researcher, as an academic, what's the difference between a usual research and this type of research? Uh, well, actually, we're doing both. <laughs> we serve mm -hmm. the public through the dashboard that we created. And we're also writing papers for submission soon uh, to peer review okay. journals. Um, academic research alone is less stressful. <laughs> once you I can finish, imagine. Yeah, once you finish your paper and then have it published, then you have a big achievement already. And in yeah. order to have your paper published, you only need the nod of a few peer reviewers. Okay? That's right. Uh, but when you're serving the public, the expectations are higher. Uh, the peer reviewers, quote unquote, are so many. Parang there's no room for error. They are unforgiving. <laughs> <laughs> I okay. see, I see. That's it. And then, well, um, what was the process that you went through before arriving at the current model for FASTER? I'm sure it had gone through several iterations. Now. Maybe you could just share with us some, some stories on that aspect. Uh, what's the process? Uh, that yes, you that you went through. through. Uh, I think it took us uh, four to five weeks uh, before mm -hmm. we were able to safely say that our model is stable. <laughs> ano yan eh? uh, every day, okay? We went through mm -hmm. trial and errors, even heartaches when, when there were criticisms. <laughs> For I'm four sure. to five sure. weeks, we would meet <clears throat> every day, okay? Uh, shout out to my team every day, every night, okay? Until mm -hmm. late at night. Okay, maybe 11 o'clock, uh, 12 o'clock, 2 a.m. Uh, just polishing the model, uh, including the parameters. And then during okay. the day, the following day, we would meet again, okay, for other matters. We would also read uh, related uh, literature because it's important. We need to update our parameters. We would also help, uh, hold meetings with different shake, uh, stakeholders, okay. Uh, pina present namin yung mga models no? and as we uh, we go along we improve we improve the models based on the feedback i see i see and then ma'am this from to sir doc toby no our also we featured him last week hello good afternoon doc toby thank you for joining us <laughs> um well having used this model for for quite some time now are there any adjustments that you are anticipating to further improve it uh, yes, uh, we're just, um, siguro, kasi remember, we're now in a new regime. Uh, we just had MECQ. Our parameter uh, was based on ECQ. Okay? Uh, our plan is to, to uh, introduce a new lambda for the new regime, the new period of uh, MECQ. Okay? So we will fit again our, our data. Uh, we will find the, the corresponding new lambda, second lambda, and then update our projections. Uh, we're just waiting for maybe, we need more data kasi, kasi we transitioned to MECQ only last May 16. No? So we, we need That's at right, least seven, seven days, Guru, seven days more of data. Mm, at least okay. seven days. And then we will, uh, we will have parang another parameter introduced uh, in the model. Okay, man. For a while there, when you mentioned we're in a new regime, I'm, I wasn't sure if I should be worried or <laughs> or happy, you know. But uh, apparently, regime refers to a period. Yes. Okay, man, no? <laughs> in the mathematical modeling world. Yes. Okay, na bahan po ako for a while. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, but um, well, there's a question from our partners in media. So thank we thank them for joining us. 
um, is there a way right now to compute for the probability of a second wave? Oh, sabi ko, ayoko sa yugitin yung second wave na yan. <laughs> I don't want to ano eh, get into the controversy of the of that second wave. Um, okay. First, well, uh, you can see in the media their definitions of second wave. Uh, uh, epidemiologists uh, have their definition of uh, wave. And then politicians have, and, and uh, government officials have their definition of wave. Uh, mm -hmm. We have our own definition of wave. And ayoko nang isama ole. Now, when you say probability okay. of uh, having a second wave, that's that's uh, a million dollar question, no? Because it, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. In fact, yung collecting data pangalang is a is already a huge challenge. Eh? Uh, we can't see the entire picture. Okay? It's difficult to, end, to see the entire picture and therefore come up with single numbers like probability. Okay. It's an ongoing process. Yes. No. And I, I guess also for the public, no, we, we use these terms a little loosely in a sense. Yeah. No, But uh, of course, we need to back all of these up with, with data. At the end of the day, data should be the one to drive the decisions, no? the, the action points. Um, but on that note, ma'am, can your current model be used to compare uh, projections from other countries also, would you say? I, I guess coming from a more academic perspective, is this translatable in other uh, contexts? Yes, actually the, the model that we're using is uh, in, the, uh, it's in the family of SEIR model, although we have a, a mm. new a, a additional compartment C. Uh, and it's very common in the literature, okay? Perhaps the own uh, different models from different countries differ in the in the way uh, parameters are obtained, okay? So doon lang naman nagkakaiba-iba. Pero the, the, the SEIR um, framework is parang ano yan ah, uh, common in the mathematics literature. So whether you use it in the Philippines or in the other in other countries, it should work. No? Meron lang siguro ng iba-ibang parameters and interpretation. Mm -hmm. All right. But if, if we bring it back, ma'am, to the Philippines, uh, you mentioned this, no? it's, you, you do work with the government in terms of uh, sharing this data. Uh, one question we received here, what challenges have you encountered in terms of working with the government? Without naming names, perhaps, no? <laughs> just some, uh, <laughs> A uh, glimpse of, of uh, the experience. I, I'll be careful here. Uh, yes, a lot of challenges. <laughs> uh, maybe okay. the most challenging one is making sure that the numbers that we present to the decision makers make sense. Hindi masyadong mataas, hindi masyadong mababa. Kasi it's not just an academic exercise. Eh. It's, it's simpler mm. in, the, in the classroom setting. It's uh, parang there's no room for error here important decisions will be made and uh, the lives of our people are at stake uh, with, with, with these uh, decisions of the, of the government. Second, right. uh, we had to work in a more complex environment. Okay? We had to deal with different government agencies and they have their own dynamics. And, mm -hmm. and <laughs> we had to be exposed to, be, to, to the public. <laughs> Uh, we were not used to this, no? hanggang classroom lang kami. No? But we persevered uh, because we're sure that what we're doing uh, is service to the country. Yun na lang, kahit nakapagod, saka nakaiyak minsan. <laughs> and I think that's precisely why this is an act of magis. No? And then that's, that's why we are sharing this right now with the community. Um, and on that note, ma'am, how is the team that has been working, as you mentioned, day and night for weeks on now? Kumusta naman po sila? Kumusta kayo? As, as people, as, as people who also worry about their own health, your own families, no? How is the team? Uh, maybe we will have a meeting later. Kakamustahin na namin. <laughs> well, um, I think during, as I said, during the first four weeks, parang... Well, our focus was just on the on developing and improving the model and hindi na namin alaman four weeks na pala five weeks na pala no 
yung ganon. Uh, parang we were on call 24-7. Every day, there will be requests from government agencies to produce numbers and then meetings and so on. Now, uh, I think now that the model is more stable, uh, rather stable, we just need further improvements. Uh, medyo napapahinga na rin. <laughs> And uh, we're now focusing on finishing the papers, okay? We're okay. finishing the papers. But we're also preparing for another uh, model. Uh, this time, something that will help uh, contact tracing. Um, ano pa ba? Kasi important yung contact tracing, eh. Okay. So, All right. Mm -mm. So those, those are what are in store, so to speak. Yeah. Actually, uh, we've been meeting no, since uh, this week. We've been meeting uh, and uh, discussing uh, models for contact mm -hmm. tracing and then clustering, clustering of cases, uh, and then possible spread of the disease from one barangay to another. Okay, so mathematical okay. models pa rin yun. Okay. Before, ma'am, we go to some of the, the closing questions. So we, we have a follow-up question for, again, from Dr. Toby. How does this model differ from, uh, I guess, a, a model used for tuberculosis? Uh, well, actually, uh, whether SIR, SEIR, and so on, um, the compartmental models have the same basic uh, ingredients, but uh, the formulation depends on the nature of the disease. So, iba yung nature, iba yung nature ng TB sa HIV, sa COVID-19. So even if we're using the same basic ingredients, we, we, we adapt the, the equations and the terms and the parameters of the model to the nature of the disease that we are trying to understand. So it, magkakamukha sila pero iba-iba yung nature nila. Iba-iba yung okay. uh, terms. Oh. All right. And then ma'am, no, as, as of course, as Athenians, part of our regular uh, exercise is that of reflection. Um, so far, and in the past few weeks that you have been doing this work, uh, perhaps you could share one or two uh, very notable lessons you have learned as an as an academ academician, as a mathematician, you know, uh, having gone through the experience of doing this act of magic. Okay. Um... Uh, although this project is quite challenging and exhausting for for us, okay, uh, for for me it's another realization of my desire to see math not just an as an abstraction but as something very tangible no, and very useful in our lives. With mathematics, uh, I am uh, we are able to serve the country. So, hindi lang siya abstraction. It's very concrete. No? It, it can help uh, our government, uh, our policy makers. It can help solve the prob our problem and so on. Yes. So, that's a, that's an answer I could give my daughter, my young daughter, should she ask, Dad, anong silbi ng math? <laughs> yeah. Tama, ma'am. Yes. Yeah. Then, ma'am, uh, how can how can our audience who are watching right now or other researchers uh, who might want to help? You no, know, how could they reach you and your team? Um, well, well, we, they can contact us, and then Rina, Rina, are you here? <laughs> we have. Yes, um, I think Doc Rina is here. Yeah, we have. Uh, we have emails. Okay, they can send us emails, and then okay. we have. Um, website the faster website maybe they can just search arena can you help me here how can they anada how can they uh contact us get in touch with the team get in touch with the team there ah so it yeah. is, it's the same yeah. email address doc rina uh, shared also yeah they can um send email to faster covid that uh, at gmail.com yeah. yes so we'll, we'll include that email address again in the posting of of this uh, episode on our Atenea Facebook account. Uh, any last words, Doc LV, for our friends and our audience today? Last uh, word. Um, I'm very thankful for this opportunity to use mathematics. Dati akala ko ano lang yan, uh, abstraction lang yan. No? Uh, to use mathematics uh, to serve the country. No? It's not very easy. 
uh, it's easier to do mathematics in the classroom. It's, it's uh, a jungle out there. It's more challenging, pero hindi kami napapagod. No? Hindi, kahit hindi, na, hindi natutulog, hindi kami napapagod because we're, we know that we are serving our country using our knowledge of mathematics. And with that, ma'am, we'd like to thank you again for this act of magic. I hope you, well, I'm sure there are a lot of people applauding for you right now, but since we can't quite hear them, uh, please do know that we are, are very thankful and also we are praying for you and your team that you may stay well. All right, do get some sleep also. Even mathematicians do need to sleep, I believe. No. Um, and again, we'd like to thank everyone who joined us this afternoon. Uh, this is the third and but probably and then the third session of Acts of Magis at the end of the forefront of a pandemic. Please do join us again next week uh, where we will feature our last uh, research for this set. No? We're hoping to, to continue uh, sharing all these Acts of Magis because apart from being Acts of Magis, these are also Acts of Hope. No? Uh, and so with that, we'd like to thank everyone and please do take care. We'll see you again next Friday, same time, and do take care. Goodbye. Thanks.